Hey guys, here we are at 13th part of the story. Weakened to their breaking point, the allied shinobi forces have little chance of survival. The Jubi had fired a colossal by Judama in their direction. The former Hokage are too busy trying to save them to focus on Kurama and the rest of the Bijou's final plan of action. We will see as Naruto and Sakura go back in time to prevent disaster. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe button. Now, let's jump right in. I still think you are taking too much of a chance letting him run about like that Naruto-kun, Hiruzen stated as he took a long puff on his pipe. Don't worry too much Gigi. I can easily teleport to him when needed. Besides, Anko called dibs on him. Don't you think that Master and Apprentice deserves a long-awaited reunion without third-party interference? Naruto stated with a chuckle. Naruto, Hiruzen and Hideyoshi were sitting in the council chambers with the rest of the Konoha Shinobi Council and Elders. Along with them were the surprising addition of Ryan and Beno Anaki along with Roshi and Han. In the center of the room was the crystal ball that was the focus of Haruzen's Tomega no Jutsu. Underneath the ball was a ceiling array that was generating an illusion in the center of room. An illusion that displayed the images shown in the crystal ball. I agree with the old monkey brat. Orochimaru shouldn't be underestimated. Anaki said as he watched the treacherous Sanin dodge another swipe from the main mud golem only for a smaller wolf to crunch down on his arm. Don't worry about it. Besides, one of my clones is keeping a very close eye on the idiot. How about we view someone else? Any preference? Turn to my granddaughter. I want to see what that hot-headed girl is doing. With the amount of deception, you have hidden in how to get the scrolls, I fear that she will bite off more than she can chew. As you wish Suchika Jdono. Kurotsuchi, Suzumabachi and Akastuchi were carefully moving about in the trees surrounding the clearing. In the clearing was their objective. Good news, both scrolls were present. Bad news, they were guarded by Uzumaki Naruto himself. Kurotsuchi shivered in fright as she remembered how powerful Naruto truly was, even a single clone was dangerous. I think we should retreat and try our luck someplace else Kurotsuchi, Suzumabachi said with a nervous tilt in her voice. I agree with Suzumabachi. We shouldn't tangle with him. I would agree but with you too, but he already knows that we are here. While he may allow us to retreat, I doubt that it will make a good impression on him, especially with my grandfather trying to arrange a marriage with him. I doubt a coward will be accepted. It isn't cowardice to retreat and regroup when you know that you are outmatched. All three stumbled and nearly fell off their perches. As one, the three E1 ninja turned into their horror son Arto standing there with a smile on his face. Good to see you again Kurotsuchi. I hope you have fun in the exams. I expect great thing from you, just like I expect great things from Konohamaru. Uzumaki-sama. Kurotsuchi stated with a nervous jitter. Are you sure that you should move away from the scrolls? Suzumabachi and Akatsuchi looked alarmed Kurotsuchi's question. They were very afraid that she had offended Naruto and they would now suffer the consequences. To their shock, instead of being offended, Naruto chuckled as he said, who says that the scrolls aren't protected? Do you really think that a simple clone would be the only defense? I didn't mean to offend you, but may we leave? We have decided not to try our hands in getting these scrolls. Naruto worked an eyebrow in interest as he asked, why would I do that? As soon as you pass the perimeter barrier, the challenge had started. Luckily for you, the challenge isn't a physical one. What do you mean Uzumaki-sama? Suzumabachi asked with fear. If the challenge was not a fight, then what could it be? Simple, there are traps surrounding pedestal. Seal-based traps that are out of a common Jonin's capabilities to undo. I will give you a puzzle. The answer to the puzzle will be the method to deactivate the seals or bypass them. There will be five puzzles of increasing difficulty. Do you understand? The three E1 ninja gave apprehensive nods causing Naruto to smile and say, that's the spirit. Sometimes, it is impossible to retreat. You will have limited resources and most of all, be exhausted. This challenge is to see if you have the cleverness to survive in such situations. The first puzzle. That's not something I expected Naruto. Why puzzles? Simple GG, very few would be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a clone containing only 5% of my skills. So to be fair, I decided to test their minds. After all, those who can survive impossible odds with minimum resources deserve to be Chunin. Hiruzen chuckled and said, Your expectations for Chunin Ninja remind me of the stories my father told of the warring clan period. I fear that the vaunted s rank shinobi will become a common fixture in the future, especially with your expectations. Naruto nodded while the rest kept their eyes focused on the illusion showing the Iwa team. The first puzzle. To touch the earth, one must beware of the waters. While the waters and earth coexist, 
both still try and subjugate each other. Find the balance between the two and the path will open. That makes no sense. Suzumabachi complained with Kurotsuchi nodding in agreement. Akatsuchi remained stoic as he though through the puzzle. I make complete sense. I have even given you the hint as to what the seal does. How to deactivate or bypass it is also in the puzzle. Think and the answer will come, Naruto stated as he walked towards the pedestal. The Iwa team watched as he passed through translucent barriers. Kurotsuchi and Suzumabachi were annoyed at the ease Naruto had passing through the barriers, but Akatsuchi noticed something interesting. As Naruto walked through the first barrier, the ground started trembling as it got wet. After pondering for a few moments Akatsuchi grinned as he moved to the edge of the barrier with a confident grin. I have solved the puzzle. The balance is in the yin and yang components in our chakra. We need to mix four part yin and one part yang and then apply the water walking concept to pass, Akatsuchi stated as he made the ram seal and focused his chakra. After focusing, he passed the barrier and walked over the ground without triggering whatever trap Naruto had set up. Impressive, Akatsuchi was it? Akatsuchi nodded as Naruto smiled and said, I didn't expect you to pick it up so fast. So ladies, are you going to just stand there or join your comrade for the next puzzle? Kurotsuchi and Suzumabachi shared a look before cautiously approaching the barrier. Focusing their chakra, they balanced the yin and yang components to the ratio Akatsuchi stated before walking over the trembling ground. Now that you lot have passed the first puzzle, let me show you what would have happened if you didn't bypass it, Naruto stated with a grin as he created a cage bunshine and had it walk out to the first trap. At first nothing happened but then, before they could even blink, the ground gave away as a large serpent made of water rose and tore the clone to pieces, dispelling it. What the hell was that? Suzumabachi exclaimed in horror as the serpent merged back with the ground as the hole was filled in with new dirt. One of the six guardians. The golems are created with the use of Fuenjutsu and Senjutsu. That's all you need to know. Now the next puzzle. The three Kunoichi from Uzu were cautiously watching the pair of metallic human statues for any signs of movement. Of all the things they could have faced, they were just unlucky to face the twin golems, as Zabuza called them. Their bodies were crafted from a metallic alloy and infused with seals to animate them. The seals even gave them limited sentience to the point of imitating humans. The twins were named Agni and Rudra. The two names were taken from mythology from before the Rikudo Sen and introduced Nainshu. They were the names of gods that jointly governed over fire and lightning. One holding the more peaceful domains while the other holding the destructive side of the fire and lightning. This isn't good. Why the hell are those two here? Karen asked with wide eyes. This is Naruto-sama we are talking about. I doubt we need to defeat them, especially since both are immune to fire and lightning. Face it, we have no chance of defeating them, Swearin stated with a frown. My crystals will harmlessly shatter on their metallic bodies, same with Haku's ice. Maybe, Karen and I could hold them down for a short time so that Haku can take the scroll, but I doubt it would be that simple. Maybe. Maybe not. I think I can use the Kongo Fusa to hold them back with some help from you Swearin. Haku, you will need to use your limited knowledge on seals to get the scrolls. From the Shiki, I will hazard a guess that it is some kind of blood seal. You will need to smear blood in the right sequence on the points to disable the barrier. Then you can take the scroll, Karen said as she carefully observed the seals carved into the pedestal with a pair of binoculars that Swearin created with her shotgun. Can you guess the pattern Karen? Not from here. I can't read all the symbols from here. You will have to figure it out. We will keep the twin guardians distracted. Swera nodded before grinning as she created a simple hexagonal crystal. Using her control over the crystal, she carved an Uzumaki grade demolition seal onto the surface of the crystal before letting a drop of blood fall in the center of the solid shuriken like construct. Let's get the party started, what do you say? Swera, wait. Haku screamed only for the blue-haired girl to grin and throw the seal-bearing crystal shuriken towards Agni and Rudra. The sound of the shuriken cutting through the air drew both metallic golems' attention. Seeing the crystal flying towards them, glowing with an ever-brightening inner light, they jumped away just as the shuriken struck the ground and exploded. Both guardians looked about trying to get a glimpse of their attacker when they sensed an attack from below. Jumping back, they saw two golden chains of chakra erupt from the ground. Growling, both started channeling the nature chakra flowing through their artificial bodies as fire and lightning erupted around their respective blades. Come out and face us you cowards. Defeat us and we shall allow you access to the scroll we guard, Ruder exclaimed with a metallic screech. As if, Karen said with a chuckle as her voice floated around the clearing. We aren't going to fall for that. 
there is no way to physically defeating Yuta for a team of Mir Jinan. Hmm. It seems that we have intelligent opponents brother. They are wise enough to know their limits. They pass our test, do they not? Agni said as he extinguished his sword and sheathed it at his waist. Rudra followed his example, as the sword in his hand stopped sparking with lightning before the metallic golem slid the sword into its holster in the back. That they do, Rudra stated before calling out, Janan, you have passed our challenge. You may attempt to break the protection seal on the pedestal, but be warned, only one chance per team. Only one member may approach the pedestal. If you fail, we will forcefully remove you from the exams. Who shall be your candidate? You may choose not to take the final challenge and retreat. Doing so will keep you in the exams but will make you ineligible for a second attempt at these scrolls. Swearin, Haku and Karen cautiously approached the twin golems before sharing a look. After a few moments, Karen walked forward with a confident gait as she said, I shall take a crack at the seal. Very well. You will have one minute. If you aren't able to disable the seal within that time limit, you will fail, Agni stated causing Karen, Haku and Swearin to pale in response. This just kept getting better and better. One minute was too little time, even for Karen. Ah. Can we still back out? Karen asked with a nervous chuckle. Unfortunately no. If you try, we shall forcefully retire you from the exams, Ruder said with a suddenly menacing tone. Karen gulped as she nodded to herself and approached the pedestal. Interesting challenge Naruto-sama. Do you believe that Karen-san will be able to break the seal within a minute? Kyashi asked with interest. He was quite intrigued by the amount of intricate sealing done to prepare for this year's exam. Let us see. I have great expectations of her, but Karen is still not up to Uzumaki's standards for her age, though I didn't expect the twins to impose a time limit of only a minute. They must have done that since they could sense that Karen is a new Uzumaki. For others, the time limit is supposed to be 5 minutes. So a bit out of plan? Shikaku asked with concern. Sentient golems who are able to override commands given to them is a bit unsettling of the men. A bit, but I did allow them a bit of leeway in their orders. Quite clever to use the small loophole I accidentally left. Naruto mused with a grin. What were the orders you gave Naruto-kun? Hideyoshi asked with interest. They were to test the bravery and wisdom of the teams. If the team in question passed the initial test, they would allow a single member, a single chance to break the seal with a limited time of up to 5 minutes, at the golem's discretion. The time limit was to be set by the performance of said team. Team Uzu's performance was flawless in the first test, so they should have been given 5 minutes, but as I said the loophole is quite simple. Up to 5 minutes at their discretion. I can see how they manipulated the loophole. You should be much more careful when ordering these two golems in the future Naruto-sama. Make sure to plug in all loopholes they could utilize, Shikaku stated causing Naruto to nod as he watched with interest as Karen bit thumb and started rubbing blood on the points in a sequence. After she finished rubbing blood on the final point, she brought her hands into the ram seal and focused her chakra, causing the blood smears to glow. Everyone anxiously waited for the outcome. After a few moments, everyone believed that the girl had failed, when a small dome appeared atop the pedestal before shattering into motes of green chakra. Interesting, I didn't expect you to be able to break the seal so easily. You truly are a credit to your clan Karen-sama. It would be our pleasure to protect you and the rest of Uzu in the future. Please, take the scrolls and leave. Head north from here, you will come to a small river. Follow the river upstream and you will reach the tower. I would advise that you make haste. There will be others prowling for easy scrolls, not to mention the time bases sealing traps. Agni stated with an ominous tone before he and Rudra glowed, showing seals all over their bodies. After a few moments, they vanished in flashes of light, leaving behind two metallic and crystal cores with seals carved into them, the size of large grapefruits. I was really nervous there in the end Karen. I though you wouldn't make it in time, Swearin said with wide eyes as a cold sweat dripped down her and her teammates' faces. For a moment, so did I Swearin. Let's head to the tower now. I don't want to waste time and get ambushed by who knows what. I agree with Karen, and Karen, good job. Alright girls, let's move out, Haku said as the three turned north and disappeared, leaving behind a blurring trail of their hair colors. Something isn't right with this situation. Sasuke commented as he and his two teammates looked down from a tall tree. They were in an area of the forest of death which was sparsely populated with the huge trees. By no means was it a clearing. Just the concentration of trees was much lower than expected. The area was giving off a serene presence but that presence was what alerted Sasuke to the strangeness of the situation. Team 7 had just arrived here after gaining their first scroll, 
a heaven scroll, by completely destroying the wooden golem guardian with Konohamaru's combustion bending and Sasuke's fire bending while Sai conjured up a monkey made of ink to fetch the scroll. Quite easy for the trio, if they may say so themselves, but now, all three were on alert. Something just didn't feel right. The scroll was placed on a wooden platform that jutted out halfway up one of the large trees. That itself caused them to freeze. All three knew of the famed Makutan and that there were only two users present in Konohai at the moment. If the scroll had either of them as a guardian, then the whole exam got far more interesting. Not to mention harder. The second thing that alerted them to the unnaturalness of the situation was that the sound of creatures was completely absent. That was a big indicator of something unnatural. Finally, there were the glowing seals strategically placed all around the tree with the scroll, spreading out to nearly half a kilometer. If this didn't spell trap, nothing did. After a few minutes of silent contemplation, Sasuke turned to Sai and said, send a few ink mice towards the tree. Try to trigger as many of the seal-based tarps as possible Sai. We need to remove as many of them as we can before we approach. I don't think the mice will activate the traps, but I will do as you request Uchiha. Something about this situation has me. All of us on edge, so be ready to retreat at a moment's notice. The pale boy said as he used his waterbending skills to manipulate some of the ink stored in his gourd into the form of multiple mice before using ninjutsu to bring them to life. The mice climbed down form the tree branch the members of Team 7 were perched on and quickly scurried towards the scroll. The first few seals didn't even register them pass. Sai mentally commanded the mice to try and forcefully activate the seals only to fail. Seeing that the mice were unharmed, Sai had them creep forwards until they were nearly at the base of the scroll tree when one of the traps activated. Before the tree Janon could even blink, a pinpoint sized rotating black ball came to existence for less than a second before disappearing. The Janon gaped at the amount of damage the seal trap did. Those precious few milliseconds were all the trap needed to shred the mice and most of the surrounding area into dust. From what the three could deduce, the ball attracted anything and everything in range while tearing anything caught within close proximity to shreds. If that was a human, the only thing anyone would find would be shredded slices of flesh. Why don't we just retreat and try it another place? I don't know about you, but I would love to keep my limbs attached. Konohamaru stated with a nervous tilt to his voice. Sasuke and Sai silently nodded in agreement and turned to leave when a massive wave of wind caught them off guard, blowing them into the closest tree before roughly falling onto the ground. Groaning in pain, the three Janan stood up to see Akuza Kunoichi standing where they previously occupied, looking down at them with a baleful glare. Sasuke-kun, it is so nice to meet you at last. I am sorry to say, that I don't have much time to play with you as I had wished, so please accept my gift and be done with it. With that said, the woman unleashed a massive quantity of killing intent that should have immobilized what she considered Mira Janan as her neck extended towards Sasuke, with her mouth wide open, fang-like teeth ready to bite down. Before the head and neck extend more than a couple of feet, spikes of wood flew out of the branch in an attempt to skewer the Kuza Kunoichi. The Kunoichi jumped back to dodge the spikes only to be kicked in the back by a burning leg, throwing her away for the Janan and crashing into the ground triggering one of the seals embedded in the soil. Before the woman could even realize what happened, a blast of intense lightning erupted around her feet causing her to scream in pain. Gakis take the scroll and get out of here. Head to the tower, don't wait around. Tora and I will handle the snake. We can help, Konohamaru exclaimed only for Sasuke to smack the boy behind the head and comment with a sneer, don't even think about it Konohamaru. If Anbu and Jonin are handling this one, we have no need to become a burden to them. Besides we have an exam to finish. Sai, you got the scroll? Let's go, the quicker we get away for here, the better. Clapping sound filled the area drawing everyone's attention, though Anko and Tora kept an eye on the Kuza Kunoichi still on the ground suffering from muscle spasms. The Kuza Kunoichi looked up with great difficulty and glared at the source. Shishu? Konohamaru asked with confusion. What are you doing here? I am just a blood clone Konohamaru. Now get going. Orochimaru's main target is Sasuke and his Sharingan, so it is better that he reaches a heavily protected area before too long. As a view Orochimaru, you must be the greatest fool in known history. Did you forget that no one can fool my sensory perception? Sneaking into Konoha is the last mistake you will ever do, Naruto said with a sneer before nodding to Anko as Team 7 quickly vacated the area, just as Orochimaru stood up, muscles still twitching from the intense electrical shock. Anko gained a malicious smirk as she cooed out, You know Sensei, I think this look fits you. I believe that it is fitting that you die a worthless woman.
like you claimed I was. Now scream bitch. Orochimaru tried to activate the cursed seal on Anko only to be shocked when it didn't respond. Her eyes widened even further when lightning erupted from Anko's fingertips and struck the place she previously occupied. It was a good thing she was able to jump back or form the scorch marks she witnessed the lightning left, she would be nothing more than a screaming pile of flesh. It seems that Naruto has taught you how to use this vaunted ninshu as well, has he Anko? It won't do you any good. I will win in the end. After all, you never learned everything you could under me. You shouldn't have gone against me Anko, you could have been great. Cut the small talk team. I will rip out you hard and drink the blood dripping out of the shriveled up piece of flesh. Anko screamed in anger as she charged forward swinging her fists releasing blast of concentrated fire at the snake Sanin. To Orochimaru's credit, she was still able to dodge most of the blast with the agility of a snake as she returned fire with shuriken and kunai. Anko didn't even blink as she brushed the projectile weapons away with swipes of her palms, as she manipulated the very air to do her bidding. Jumping, Anko used a burst of concentrated flames to launch higher into the air before crashing down on top of Orochimaru with her heels enshrouded in crimson flames. An explosion occurred throwing the master and apprentice duo back. Anko easily corrected her flight and landed on the balls of her feet, but Orochimaru was thrown back into another tree which activated another seal causing Orochimaru to be caught in a hexagonal barrier. Oh! Looks like the mouse trap caught a snake instead. I really love that one, Naruto said with a grin prompting Tora to ask, what does it do Naruto-sama? Naruto didn't answer Tora, instead he shouted out, oh Yanko, do you know that I can have the box change size? No, but what does that matter? With enough force, Sensei should be able to break the barrier. Not quite. Touching the barrier will electrocute the snake, so you get my drift? Anko gained a sick rain as she nodded before saying, still for the benefit of our guest, you should explain Naruto-sama. Quite right. Listen well Orochimaru, the barrier absorbs any excess chakra it comes in contact with and then channels it back into the captive as an intense jolt of electricity. Besides it would need a chakra force of a high A-rank jutsu for cracks to form. Can you guess what will happen if you do try to escape? Orochimaru glared at Naruto as he cursed the blonde-haired daimyo in his head right before he paled. Surrounding his position were the mud wolves with the crystal fragments on their foreheads and on his left was the larger wold with the glowing crystal orb on its forehead. Any last words sensei? I will be sure to not remember them. Anko teased with a dark grin before the barrier collapsed upon itself. The last thing Orochimaru remembered before falling unconscious was an intense white light as insurmountable pain overcame all her physical senses. Snake-like amber eyes opened to a sight they were intimately familiar with. The woman was surprised to see that he was inside one of the cells that she once used to hold her failed experiments for observation. From what she could deduce, it was the very same base that her former sensei had raided with Anbu and drove her from her home and research. A red light shined for a moment as she heard the sound of someone puffing on a smoking pipe. The darkness beyond the cell hid everything from even her enhanced sight, but the little red light drew her attention. Focusing, she managed to make out the form of an old man sitting on a chair. With a careless presence, the woman smirked as she greeted the mysterious figure, Sensei, so nice to see you again. I didn't expect to meet you for another month. And I had hoped that you would have wizened up and stopped with your futile quest Orochimaru. Whose body are you inhabiting? Akunoichi who used to serve me. I saved her from some lecherous nuknan. For that, she decided to serve me in any capacity she could. She even offered me her body in gratitude. Unfortunately, she didn't realize that I saw the offer a little differently from her. Though I must say, she wasn't too displeased when she learned that I would be taking over her body. You may say, she was even overjoyed to be of service. A young life extinguished due to your quest for immortality. She must have been very competent for you to speak so fondly of her. That she was sensei, though I doubt that you came here to ask how I had been? Orochimaru said with a smirk as Hiruzen stood up and approached the bars of the cell, putting his face into sharp relief from the shadowy light. The stern countenance caused Orochimaru to flinch. She hadn't seen such disappointment in her former sensei's face since he was a Jinan. It pains me to say this Orochimaru, but you are going to be executed in a month, during the finals of the Chunin exams. You will be used to set an example for all Shinobi and Kunoichi of Konoha. They shall know what will happen should they turn on us. Kukaku. So tyrannical of you, Sensei. I didn't expect that of you, especially since you never liked using excessive force. What changed? Oh, it wasn't I who ordered your execution. It was Naruto. After all, I'm only keeping the seat warm until the Chunin exams end. After that, 
Naruto will be officially taking over as the goddamn Hokage. It is quite interesting isn't it that the son would succeed the father? I find it quite poetic. Goodbye Orochimaru, don't expect Tsunade or Jiraiya to come meet you. Even I didn't wish to see you. But I decided that it was my duty as your sensei to give you a final lesson. Actions always have consequences my wayward student, now you must reap what you have sown for so long. Goodbye, for I doubt you will be able to escape. After all it may have once been your base, but Naruto has turned it into a fortress designed for a singular purpose. And that is to hold you. Orochimaru watched as Hiruzen moved back and vanished into the gloomy darkness that engulfed the area beyond the cell block. As Hiruzen left, Orochimaru grinned as he saw that Hiruzen and Naruto were overconfident. The seals added to the door would be quite easy to break, now she just had to wait until the right time to escape. The 10 teams that made it through the second phase of the Chunin exams were arrayed in the center of an arena built in the tower. The arena was surrounded by a high catwalk with the Hokage and his guests sitting in a box carved into the very structure of the tower. The teams that managed to pass the phase were none other than the illustrious team 7, 8, 9 and 10 from Konoha joined by team Kabuto. The full Kunoichi team from Uzu were also a contender. Gara and his siblings were the team from Suna, while team Kirabai represented Kumo. Kurotsuchi and her teammates also made the cut with a surprising presence of the Auto team. The Tosuchikage and surprisingly the Mizukage were sitting on either side of the Hokage. Teams 7 and 9 were surprised at the presence of Terumi Mei, the Godai Mizukage. Naruto was leaning on the statue of the two hands making the ram seal eating from an instant ramen cup. Hiruzen stood up and started speaking, the Chunin exams are a sacred ritual. It was instated to promote international cooperation and deter war between the nations. To be exact, the Chunin exams are the substitute for war. Some of the gathered Janan were about to protest when a heavy presence fell on fell on their shoulders sending shivers down their backs. Casting a wary glance at Naruto, they kept their peace and allowed Haruzen to continue. Luckily, that is the obsolete definition. As of this iteration, the Chunin exams are an institution to promote understanding and eventual friendship between the participating nations, or to strengthening the existing friendship between allied nations. That doesn't mean that you lot are free to be lazy. You are here to both foster understanding and friendship, but also represent the relative strength of your countries. Ahem. Naruto interrupted causing Hiruzen to nod and say, Now I will turn over the explanation to Naruto-kun. Naruto-kun, if you will. Thank you Hiruzen Dono and I welcome you to the Konoha Anaki Dono, Mei Dono. Please enjoy your stay. Now Janan, pay attention, there are too many of you at present. Normally only 8 Janan are allowed into the finals. This time, up to 16 will be allowed. The finals are normally hosted as a single day event, but this one will be a 3 day event. The first day will be used to select the quarter finalists. The second day is for the quarter finals and the semi finals. The finals will be hosted on the final day with a preceding exhibition match between me and the legendary Kumo duo of the Reikiji and his brother, the Hachibi Jinchiriki, Kiribai. Mei and Onaki looked startled at the news, but decided to not comment as Naruto continued, I am sure that you have all deduced that the third and final phase will be a tournament-style elimination battle. Now I am sure that a single question is running through your heads. The answer to it is no. Your performance in the fights will be separately evaluated by a team of impartial judges before recommendations will be sent to your respective cage. None of you may be recommended or all of you may, there is no fixed number of recommendations. The final say lies with your respective cage. Seeing the confused look on Kiba's face, Naruto sighed before stating, simply, the longer you stay in the tournament, the more time you will get to impress the judges and the greater chance you will have to be promoted. Also, we shall be holding a preliminary to cut your numbers in half. With 30 Janan here, only 15 will be allowed, so get ready for your matches. Each match type and contestants will be randomly selected. Your match type and your names will be displayed in the large screen. I shall be the proctor for the finals and the preliminaries. Rules are simple. To win, you must defeat your opponent, or opponent, or when I declare someone the winner. Willful killing, while allowed, is highly frowned upon and will be a black mark against your promotion. My decision is final. Contest it, and I will make sure that your ninja license is revoked and chakra system sealed away with a Nuzumaki prisoner seal. What? Tsuchikage Sama will never agree with that. The sudden presence focused on her caused the girl to gulp in fear before the killing intent hit her. Turning to the source, she saw that Anaki was glaring at her. Suzuma Bachi. I will agree with Uzumaki Sama's decision as I know him to be fair. His honor is impeccable. Do not bring into question the decisions of your superiors. 
Kamazuru, that is a mark against you. If you get into the finals, be sure that you will have to work twice as hard to impress the judges as none of them will be pleased with your outburst. After all, none of them reached their positions due to favor from their cage, Naruto said with a chuckle causing the Jonin in the cage to chuckle with Naruto. Huh? Suzumabachi asked with confusion before her eyes widened in realization as she looked up at the cage getting a nod for Anaki, a smile from Hiruzen and a wink from Mei. Anyways. Anko activate the selection process. Let us see who shall become our first participants in the type of match they will be in, Naruto said before motioning for the Janan to head to the catwalk. As the Janan walked up to the catwalk, Kurotsuchi jabbed Suzumabachi in the ribs and hissed out, Are you crazy? Are you trying to get Izumaki-sama mad at Iwa? Don't you remember what I said of his prowls? Do you really want to make my life hell? Sorry, but I got caught in the moment. I promise to apologize to him as soon as I can. Just hope that you haven't already destroyed any possibility of me having a good marriage with him. Now let's keep the temper under control shall we? If I can, so can you, cousin. Suzumabachi nodded as she leaned on the railing with Akatsuchi and Kurotsuchi while their sensei, Roshi, standing behind them. All around the catwalks teams and their sensei were arrayed waiting for the start of the matches with some of the teams intermingling with each other. Will Kamazur Suzumabachi and Aburame Shino please come down? Suzumabachi was surprised but jumped down from the catwalk with Shino appearing in a standard sunshine. Naruto walked up to the middle of the two and started declaring the extra rules for their match. There are two extra rules due to match type. The first is that Kawarimi is forbidden. The second is that the match must be a close quarter to mid-range one. No long-range technique may be used. To be exact, it is a match to simulate an enclosed area with no substitutable material. Begin. I expected both of them to charge in as soon as the battle began. I know what you mean Kakashi. It is quite surprising to see an Aburame and a Kamazuru specializing in their Jaibachi Jutsu to not but head at the first chance, Guy said with a grin. Either way, the battle will be interesting. Personally, I believe that the Aburame has the advantage. After all he is an Inchu adept. That will give him a bit of an advantage, Zabuza said as they watched Shino and Suzumabachi circle each other with caution. Without any indication. Suzumabachi cupped her hands together before throwing it forwards calling out the name of her jutsu. Ninpo, Jaibachi Dama. A ball of writhing hornets was launched towards Shino who calmly got into a taijutsu stance. When the ball of hornets was in range, Shino raised his right leg in a quick vertical sweep causing a wave of fire to form from the arc and consume the ball of hornets. Suzumabachi, who was preparing another Jaibachi jutsu, jumped back from the advancing flames with a growl. Sneering. Suzumabachi asked, this is quite low of you Aburame. Have you forsaken your clan's traditions and decided to learn ninjutsu? Shino didn't respond at first causing the girl to clench her teeth for a moment before taking out a pair of shuriken and throwing them at Shino, causing the Aburame air to smirk behind the high collar of his coat as jumped. Twisting in the air, he performed a spin kick releasing a wave of blistering flames that blew away the shuriken and flew towards Suzumabachi. The girl cursed as she jumped to the side only to be hit in the face by a ball of Kikaiku. The girl was thrown back by the impact as the Kikaiku started crawling all over the girl. Luckily, the girl's own Jaibachi started killing off the Kikaiku before they could drain too much of the girl's chakra. Panting harshly from the sudden drop of chakra, Suzumabachi gritted her teeth before going. Through some hand seals and crashing her palms onto the ground beneath her calling out, Doden, Tajihiyari. Spikes of rock jutted out and flew towards Shino who calmly spurned around on his heel with his right extended parallel to the ground causing an arc of flames to erupt for the bottom of his heels and fly towards the flying rock spears. Suzumabachi watched with a gaping mouth as the flames knocked the spears off course and flew towards her again. This time, the wave was too large for her to dodge, so without thinking, Suzumabachi closed her eyes and used Kawarimi to save herself. The wave of flames burned the wooden log to ashes when Naruto reappeared behind Shino and caught the kick Suzumabachi had directed towards the Aburame heir's head. Kamazur Suzumabachi is disqualified for the use of Kawarimi when it was explicitly forbidden. The winner is Aburame Shino. Suzumabachi growled in frustration as she trudged up to the catwalk while Shino appeared beside his team in a sunshine. After both were out of the arena, Naruto called up the next contestants while declaring the type of match. Will Abumizaku of Ato, Misumi Tsurugi of Konoha, Gara of Suna and Rock Lee of Konoha please come down to the arena. This battle will be a two-on-two -two team battle with the teams formed at random between the selected contestant, Naruto stated as the contestants walked down to the arena. 
When all four were situated around Naruto, the blonde daimyo declared the teams. The teams shall be Gaara of Suno with Rock Lee of Konoha and Abumizaku of Otto with Misumi Tsurugi of Konoha. Begin. Naruto vanished from between the four eager Jinan while the four looked at each other, trying to size each other up. I have a very bad feeling about this. Tamari worried as Gaara gained a malicious glint in his eyes while Lee charged forward towards Zaku. Do not worry Tamari. After the ceiling, Gaara has been very tame. I am sure that he will not lose control, though I doubt his opponents will come out unscathed, Baki said with a serious face. You are mistaken Baki-san. I am sure that Lee will be the one to cause the most harm. Misumi Tsurugi and his teammates are actually traitors to Konoha. We don't have actual proof but we know it to be true. All Konoha Jinan has been ordered to eliminate them if given the chance. Lee hates traitors with a passion, so I am actually quite afraid what my youthful student will do before he ends the traitor's life. Guy said with a somber expression. It was only then, did Baki sense the barrier surrounding them. Baki nodded in understanding that he was told that for a reason. I see. A very unique way to deal with traitors that can't be proved who they are. Guy nodded to the statement as Tamari and Konkuro gaped at the conversation. Rock Lee, you press the attack. I will support you with my ninjutsu, Gara stated as he released a wave of Sunashuri Kanatsaku causing the boy to prematurely use his jutsu to counteract Gara's giving Lee a chance to move in and kick Zaku in the gut all the while calling out, dynamic entry. Tsurugi took the chance to try and attack Lee only for Lee to spin around and thrust his palms out causing a burst of wind to blow Tsurugi away before jumping over Zaku as Gara's sand struck like a snake at the auto Janan. Luckily for Zaku, he was able to get out of Gar's sand with a quick kawarimi and appear behind the red-headed boy. Raising his hands, Zaku grinned as he screamed out, Zanku Kyokua. Gar smirked as he made the ram seal causing sand to coalesce into the form of Shukaku as the future god I'm Kaze Kage called out, Shukaku no date. The powerful Futanjutsu collided with the statue of Shukaku and exploded causing dust and sand to be thrown up before being blown away to show that the statue was barely chipped. Zaku looked on in horror as his strongest jutsu was easily nullified by Gara. Seeing that Zaku was preoccupied with being stunned and Lee had Tsurugi on the ropes with his airbending and Gokan taijutsu, Gara focused his attention to silence Zaku. Gara closed his eyes for a moment before Sans started gathering around him. Normally it took some time, but it seems that being in sync with Shukaku had drastically reduced the time it takes for him to draw out enough of Shukaku's chakra to form the chakra cloak. In fact, the cloak seemed different as when he finally finished forming it, the sand fell away to reveal a bubbling red chakra cloak like the one he remembered Naruto spreading around the alliance. Oh ho! It seems that you have decided to get serious my youthful Jinchuriki friend. Let me not hold you back, Lee said as he dropped his weights causing most of the Konohajan non trained by Naruto to wince as they were reminded of Lee's speed without his weights. Let me show you the true power of wind. Oh great! Now we will be watching a ping pong match again. Ino complained as Lee vanished in a burst of wind and reappeared behind Tsurugi. Before the elder Konoha Jinan could even react, he was sent flying by the kick towards Gara, who didn't even blink as he kicked the boy towards Zaku. Zaku was only able to scream in pain as he was suddenly sent flying towards the approaching Tsurugi form a powerful kick to his spine. As the two Jinan collided with each other, they were forcefully separated by strategically placed kicks from Lee and Gara. For the next few minutes, the only was anyone could describe the match was a skillful play of ping pong with two humans as the balls. The cries of pain and the sharp noise of shattering bones along with the sound of heavy impacts on flesh was the only sound heard in the arena as everyone quietly watched the impromptu and macabre table tennis match Gara and Lee decided to have with their two opponents. Gara, my youthful friend. What would you say to ending this useless match? I feel unyouthful continuing this mockery of a match. Lee asked as he kicked Zaku into the air. My thoughts exactly, Gara said with a malicious grin as he punched Tsurugi in the stomach and launched towards the place Zaku was falling. Right before Zaku and Tsurugi, now both nearly catatonic from the abuse they suffered, collided, Lee and Gara appeared and landed brutal stomps to their ribs. The loud cracking sound was clearly heard throughout the room right before Zaku and Tsurugi screamed in delirious pain and coughed up blood. Falling on the ground, the two promptly lost consciousness as the bubbling cloak of chakra receded into Gara while Lee picked up his weights and reattached them to his legs. After letting them take a couple of breaths, Naruto appeared and checked their pulses. Winners Gara and Lee? Medics. That was the most brutal one-sided beatdowns I have ever witnessed. Oi, Mito. What the hell have you been teaching your student? Demonte's cousin guided chuckle and say, 
just what he needs, though some of it was Naruto-sama's teachings. A most youthful battle, won't you say, Kanjiki? Damon nodded his head before saying, an understatement, though when my kids take the stage. Let's just say that I already feel pity for their opponents. If what I have heard from Zabuzai is true, then I agree. They will be a nightmare for any Taijutsu specialist, let alone an Ninjutsu specialist. The advanced Kotan is truly a dangerous ability. I wouldn't mind taking a shot against them when they are ready. I would advise against a guy. I saw the kids learning metal bending. With their ability to create and bend the metal at will, they will be far more dangerous than any other shinobi with Shikatsu Myaku or the old Kotan, Zabuza said as he leaned on the railing beside the spandex-clad Jonin. Congratulations Lee, though did you have to go so far? Tenten asked with annoyance. Against unyouthful comrades, there is no such thing as overkill. Naruto-kun said that, remember? Tenten just shook her head and was about to keep arguing when she felt a gentle tap on her shoulder. Turning her head, she saw Ino shake her head and say, let it go Tenten. Besides, if it was me, they would have been brain dead. Congratulations Lee, I wouldn't mind testing my air bending against yours. Yosh. Then make sure to face me in the final Xenosan, Lee exclaimed causing Ino to chuckle and nod. Will Kamazuru Kurotsuchi of Iwa and Sai of Konoha please head down to the arena? It seems that the idiots have been carted away. This match should be interesting, Ino said getting a nod from Lee and Tenten. The specific rules for this match shall be no close quarters combat. Everything other than killing is allowed. Hajime. Kurotsuchi didn't waste any time as she weaved some hand seals and then proceeded to spit out a few globs of what looked like quicklime as she called out, Yotan, Sekagi no Jutsu. Sai didn't waste any time as he dogged the technique and retaliated by throwing up a ceiling scroll. The scroll released its contents in a puff of smoke causing Kurotsuchi to jump back out of the possible area of effect and wait for the results. At first the Iwa Kunoichi was quite surprised to see a black aqueous substance rain down from the cloud of smoke but quickly tensed when she saw Sai perform some strange taijutsu katas. At first she was confused but when she saw the black aqueous substance move, she quickly weaved a few hand seals and blasted out a wave of lava calling out, Yotan, Yokai no Jutsu. The thin tendrils of ink that Sai had launched at the Iwa Kunoichi were easily vaporized by the wave of superheated rock causing the pale boy to jump back and motion for his ink to flow away from the scorching lava. Unfortunately for Sai, the lava had already vaporized a lot of the water in the ink leaving behind very thick and viscous blobs of ink that was quite hard for Sai to bend to his will. Seeing that his advantage was nearly nullified, but unwilling to give up just yet. Sai focused his will and he bended the viscous blobs into the form of lions and with a burst of chakra. He animated them while mentally commanding them to attack Kurotsuchi with extreme prejudice. Kurotsuchi was at first shocked at the three ink lions bearing down on her but with a quick application of Kawarimi. Dodged the first pounce and retaliated with another scorching wave of lava that easily vaporized the first and partially the second while the third easily jumped away. Kurotsuchi didn't have any chance to celebrate as her adrenaline-enhanced senses alerted her to the approaching danger. Rolling forward, Kurotsuchi pulled out a kunai and batted away the shuriken before throwing the blade at her opponent before turning her attention back to the two lions, one of which was much smaller than before. She is doing very well, Ino stated with interest causing her friends and comrades to nod in agreement. Then again, it is to be expected. She is the granddaughter of the son Daimei who is the rival of our own son Daimei Sama. I agree with you there. Besides, Naruto kun did say that he had sensed immense potential in her. I wonder how far she could go with Ninshu. Hinata commented only for Sakura to pipe up and state, she has enough potential to easily reach cage level at a young age even without Ninshu. The way she is spamming Yotan Jutsu is a testament of her potential. I agree with you there Sakura, though I believe that she is quickly reaching her limit," Tsunade said as she leaned on the wall beside Sakura with Shizune while staring at the battle occurring down below. I didn't say that she is at cage level. She just has the potential. Besides, how many shinobi and kunoichi at her age have you met who has such a high chakra levels outside being a Jin Shuriki, an Uzumaki or both? A valid question with a very dissatisfying answer of a handful. How do you think you would fare against her? if both of you were at the same level. Tsunade asked drawing everyone's attention. Sakura frowned for a moment before saying, that depends on stamina and tactics. The one with the greater stamina is at a better place while the one with superior tactics would be the game changer. Personally, I would hazard that it would be a difficulty fight, but in the end, I would win because I can easily shut down any of her earth and lava jutsu. Tsunade nodded as she stated, 
my thoughts exactly. Besides, that psychid doesn't stand a chance. I can tell that this battle is way out of his comfort zone. Reminds me of the time I battled against Hanzo with Orochimaru and Jiraiya. We lost. Everyone winced at her pronouncement but nodded in agreement as Sai did seem to be reaching his limits. He was barely able to dodge the shuriken and quicklam technique Kurotsuchi was using to distract him while she destroyed another of his ink beasts with another Yotan, Yokai no Jutsu before turning her attention back to Sai. It seems that your ink-based Jutsu and Ninshu isn't really up to defeating me Sai, taunted Kurotsuchi causing Sai to narrow his eyes as he dodged another volley of shuriken. Gritting his teeth, Sai mentally commanded his last beast imitation line to launch a kamikaze attack as a last desperate hope. Unfortunately, Kurotsuchi predicted him and dodged with a flawless Kawarimi and doused the lion in a stream of lava. Seeing his final lion be vaporized, Sai sighed in disappointment and raised his right hand calling out, Proctor, I forfeit. Winner by forfeit, Kamazuru Kurotsuchi of Iwa, Naruto declared appearing in the middle of the arena right over a patch of boiling lava. He would have been burned had he not been floating a few feet above the patch. With a single swipe of his hands, all the lava congealed and cooled off into ash grey stone. Kurotsuchi and Sai nodded to each other and jumped back up onto the catwalk and waited for the next match to start. Will Uzumaki Karen, Suchi Ken, Kaze Kage Tamari, Tagurashi Tenten, Karu and Yamanaka Ino please come down to the arena. All six jumped down from the catwalk and stood around Naruto in a hexagonal pattern. Seeing the mention six ready, Naruto spoke out the specific rules of the match as they appeared on the large screen. Close to mid-range. Kawarimi forbidden. 3 vs 3 team match. The teams shall be. Uzumaki Karen, Yamanaka Ino, and Higurashi Tenten on one side and Kaze Kagetamari, Karu and Tsuchi Kin. The six shared looks before quickly moving to opposite sides of the arena with their temporary teammates. When the two teams were ready, Naruto called out, 3. 2. 1. Hajime. As soon as Naruto jumped back onto the catwalk, the two teams jumped back and started to whisper amongst themselves. This is going to be good. Haven't seen a good cat fight in a long time, especially a Kunoichi one, Roshi said with a grin causing Kakashi to chuckle and state, I believe that the term should be a tigress fight. After all, what are some Kunoichi other than tigresses? I agree with you there Hatake, but are you sure the battle will be that ferocious? The two Konoha and the one Uzu Kunoichi, I can personally attest to their ferociousness. The Kaze Kage is just as ferocious. Kumo are known for their ferocious Kunoichi as well. I believe that the only one who will disappoint us will be the Otto Kunoichi. Astute observations Hatake though I would put the Yamanaka and Karen Sama to be the most vicious, especially with their short fuses. Zabuza added with a grin. Roshi rubbed his beard before nodding his head in agreement. Yes, I believe that Ibai is right in this case. The Uzumaki women were known for their tempers and the Yamanaka has made a bit of name for herself as being especially vicious to those who anger her. I don't know you two and neither do you know me but we need to work together to get ahead so let me tell you a bit about my skills. Tamari started getting nods from her two temporary teammates. As you may have guessed, I am a Tessin Jutsu practitioner. I specialize in mid to long range combat using futon and jutsu. In close range, I can keep up for a short time. My greatest strength is in wide area jutsu. Kurunkin nodded before Kin said, I specialize in sound based genjutsu and mid range combat. Damn. Then it is up to me to handle close quarters. I specialize in Kenjutsu and Raiden Chakra Flow techniques along with Ninjutsu. Close to mid-range is my comfort zone. Alright, the Kin, you stay behind me and use your Genjutsu to distract our opponents. I will keep them from ganging up on Yukuro. I hope you have the stamina to keep up. Don't worry about me. I have more than enough stamina, but I am a bit cautious of Uzumaki. I had the pleasure to see her training under Naruto-sama. She is proficient in all ranges, though her speciality is in close range combat and battle few in jutsu. Tamari and Kin nodded in agreement when they heard Zeno calling out to them. If you have finished with the strategizing, do you think we can begin? We have been more than generous to give you more than sufficient time to get comfortable. Tamari, Kin and Kuro narrowed their eyes in annoyance but decided not to answer. Nodding to themselves, the three Kunoichi jumped into action taking on the roles previously discussed. Ino nodded to Karen and Tenten as she floated into the air. Tenten charged forward to meet Kuro. Karen closed her eyes and focused before clapping her palms as a wave of chakra erupted from her body. The waves of chakra seemed to leave burning trails on the ground before as an oppressive presence started filling the arena. 
Tamari launched a massive wave of slicing winds at Karen hoping to prevent the Uzumaki heiress from completing whatever jutsu she was attempting only for Ino to intercept and redirect it towards the Senbunkin through. Tamari frowned as she realized that her futon and jutsu was completely useless as long as Ino was in play, but she didn't have any way to defeat the Yamanaka heiress at the moment. At the same time, Kin tried to cast a wide area again jutsu only for it to suddenly fail. After retrying a couple of times, she realized that the fluctuating chakra waves from the seal was messing with her genjutsu. While Tamari and Kin were dealing with their skills being nullified, Kuro was suffering her own problems. Tenten was equipped with metal armor made of metal scales. On her waist were two large reels of fine metal wire. Finally, there was the fine iron sand emerging from a seal on Tenten's back and floating around the girl ready to do her bidding. No matter what Kuro tried, Tenten countered. Raten chakra flow on her katana blade, Tenten redirects the electricity into the ground using the iron sand. Charge in with a overhead slash, Tenten counters with two whips of the thin wire, scoring deep gouges in the earth. To Kuro, the whole situation looked hopeless. The few strikes that do get through were easily being stopped by the armor the bun-haired girl was wearing. Sighing, Kuro jumped back as she threw down a flash bomb. Taking advantage of the momentary respite, Kuro regrouped with Damari and Kin. Even as invested in her own battle, she wasn't able to notice the plight of her temporary teammates. What do we do? None of our tricks are working. Changing opponents aren't going to be feasible either. I know that Rakage Sama told me that Ninshu was formidable, but I didn't think it was this dangerously to face, Kuro said with a sigh as she cautiously watched Tino and Tenten regrouping with Karen. I know what you mean. At this rate, we will only have two options. Give up with dignity or lose without dignity. I think we should try one more time before giving up, Kin urged with a nervous tone. Tamari and Kuro nodded and turned their full attention to the opposing team only to see a finished seal on the ground. The seal was growing with an eldritch red glow striking fear into the trio's hearts. Whatever the seal was, it was bad news. This takes me back. I remember Mito-sama using this same seal in a spar against Tobira Masensei. Though she generated the seal within moments. Karen-chan is very skilled indeed. Hiruzen Mew's drawing Mei and Onaki's attention. What does this seal do Hiruzen? It has quite a subtle effect. It may seem that the seal consequences of activating the seal is high, but it is anything but. You see, the seal, I don't know the name, is designed to subtly influence anyone the user considers an enemy through psychological manipulation. You can say that it is a specialized genjutsu seal designed to psychologically influence the enemy's morale. We will be seeing a quick surrender now from the Sunakumo Auto team. Anaki frowned at the implications while Mei looked stunned before speaking. It is a hidden jutsu, isn't it? I believe so and a high-ranked one as well. Luckily it has a great weakness. If the target or in this case the targets are aware of the true power of the seal, the effectiveness is cut to a quarter. They are shuddering. I think it is time we launch our final offensive, Ino stated with a giddy expression. An expression that is more common on the face of Mitarashianko. Karen and Tenta nodded as both girls punched forward releasing blistering waves of yellow flames. Ino's face took on a more bloodthirsty grin as she released a wave of wind into the fire fanning them into a blazing inferno. Tamari, Kuro and Kin watched as the raging inferno rushed towards them and with Kawarimi forbidden, it was their death. Seeing no reason to keep fighting, all three gave up. Why did they give up? The fire wave wasn't that large, was it? Kiba asked with confusion. I don't think so Kiba. But maybe Ino had them trapped in a genjutsu and they didn't realize it. She has done it before. Her genjutsu are particularly vicious especially since she seems to have started to hang out with Anko-san, Shikamaru said though he was uncertain. He just couldn't ignore the glowing seal. Did it have something to do with the forfeiture as well? Winner by forfeit, Uzumaki Karen, Yamanaka Ino and Higurashi Tenten. Now please vacate the arena, Naruto said as he appeared in front of Tamari and with a wave of his hand, conjured up an opaque wall of winds that easily countered the wave of flames. The six Shinan quickly rushed up to the catwalk with the three defeated ones hanging their heads in shame. After dispelling the seal, Naruto looked up and started announcing the next matchup. Will Uchiha Sasuke, Yakushi Kabuto, Nisamui and Akatsuchi please come down to the arena. The next match will be a close to mid-range, no Kawarimi, two versus two team matchup with teams consisting of Nisamui and Uchiha Sasuke on one side and Yakushi Kabuto and Akatsuchi on the other side. This will be a unique match. A Konoha Shinobi and a foreigner team. I hope they can work together. Kuro and I commented as she stared at the four ninja. I don't think you will have to worry about Sasuke and Samui, 
Kura Nai Sensei. It is Yakushi san and Akatsuchi we have to worry about, Hinata said with a smile though Kura Nai picked up on the small stress the Hyuga heiress made when uttering Yakushi san. Narrowing her eyes, the Ganjutsu mistress nodded in agreement as Naruto began the match. Kura Nai was impressed with all four ninja. Sasuke was particularly impressive with the combination of his Sharingan Genjutsu and fire bending. That didn't mean that the rest were any less impressive. Samui's mastery of Kenjutsu perfectly complemented Sasuke's ranged skills. Akatsuchi's Doden Ninjutsu was equally impressive for Jinan, especially with the application of advanced defensive techniques and skillful application of simple supplementary jutsu to disrupt his opponent's teamwork or helping his teammate out of a bind. It was clear that he was a ranged fighter. Kabuto, even holding back as she knew, was just as impressive. Good speed, great precision and most of all a cool head for tactics combined with the ability to heal himself mid-battle. It was such a sad thing that he was a traitor. Still, it was an impressive battle to behold. The battle lasted for nearly 15 minutes before Kabuto just gave up stating chakra exhaustion. Akatsuchi was visibly displeased but decided that it was the best course of action. Over the course of the battle, Sasuke and Samui had been mostly on the offensive forcing him and Kabuto on the defensive. The small victories he or Kabuto could force their way were easily balanced by powerful, precise or downright sneaky techniques his opponents were using. Those sealless fire ninjutsu from Sasuke were truly difficult to both anticipate and counter. Samui's kenjutsu augmented with a subtle rate and chakra flow easily countered his small arsenal of dota ninjutsu. Though he wasn't injured, the same couldn't be said about his pride. Tsuchikage Sama was right to have cautioned him about. Ninshu, he believed it was called. Looking towards his temporary teammate Akatsuchi was visibly disappointed. Kabuto was a good partner but he was an Arayanin. Granted a very good one, but still just an Arayanin who was not really able to damage their opponents with his Daijutsu or even give him enough openings to really damage their opponents. In the end, he believed that it was just bad luck that he had such a bad matchup. Looking towards Sasuke and Samui, he could see the underlying attraction and if the reports were true, both were probably going to end up in a political marriage in the future. It was clear that the Konoha Shinobi and the Kumakuno Ichi appreciated each other's company. Winner by forfeit, Uchi Sasuke and Ni Samui. Now, please vacate the arena so that the next battle may commence. Samui and Sasuke shared a smirk as they quietly walked up to the catwalk. From the corner of her eyes, Samui saw Sasuke watching her with subtle looks. Will Hyuganeji and Inuzu Kakiba please come down to the arena? The next battle will be a standard match with no Kawarimi, Naruto declared as Neji and Kiba stood facing each other. Hajime. Kiba didn't waste any time as he and Akamaru jumped towards Neji and started twisting in a drill like motivation calling out, Gatsuka. Neji didn't even blink as he easily dodged the attack only to be suddenly blown back by a wave of ripping winds. That's new. He used air bending to extend the reach of the swirling winds, right sensei? That's right Choji. A beautiful use of wind if I have ever seen one. I doubt Neji will be able to win, Asuma said with an impressed expression. You are thinking too small, Asuma-san. The battle is just getting starting, Sakura said with a secretive smile. What do you mean Sakura? Asuma asked as he watched Kiba and Akamaru keep pushing Neji back towards the wall. They keep vigil as Neji kept trying to get out of the defensive play only to be stopped at every step. Kiba had become good and very fast but Neji was just that little bit better as he kept dodging the attacks from both Kiba and Akamaru along with the blasts of when Kiba would occasionally release to trip him up. It took 5 minutes until Asuma saw what Sakura meant. Neji was touching the rock wall with his back as Kiba and Akamaru had launched themselves forward in the fastest Gatsuga he had ever seen when Neji smirked. Before any of the Janan realized what happened, Neji spurned on his heels and vanished into the ground with shocking ease using his rudimentary mastery of earthbending causing Kiba and Akamaru to crash into solid rock. Neji reappeared behind then and stomped on the ground and made a few stiff motions with his arms causing the Inuzuka and his Ninkan to be caught in between a vice-like pair of rock pillars. I advise you to forfeit, least I accidentally crush you too. I am not as well versed in earthbending as you are with airbending after all, Neji said with a monotone voice. Kiba and Akamaru squirmed for a bit before they felt the pillars slowly increasing the pressure causing both to stiffen before Kiba sighed and called out, I forfeit. Winner by forfeit, Hyuga Neji, Naruto declared appearing beside the rock pillars. Clenching his right fist, Naruto punched the pillar and pulled back causing the pillars go reduced to dust, freeing the Inuzuka and his Ninkan. That was an interesting battle. Didn't expect a Hyuga to use anything other than the Jukan. The Inuzuka was good as well. 
but a bit reckless if you ask me. Anaki stated with an impressed expression. Hiruzen chuckled as he nodded in agreement while Mei just frowned for a moment before commenting. I remember that the Hyuga came with Naruto Sama Takiri. I believe that he didn't show any skills outside of his Juken and that was only a couple of months ago. Did he really learn Earth Ninshu to such a high degree so fast? Hiruzen frowned before stating, Neji is considered a prodigy, so it isn't surprising that he is picking up Ninshu quite fast. But we must also consider Naruto kun's teaching ability. Without Naruto kun's tutelage, I doubt that he would have reached so far. Mei nodded in understanding as Anaki just sat there in a contemplative mood. We'll make sure swear in, Kaze Kage Kankuro, Hyuga Hinata, Akedo Yoroi, Saru Tobi Kono Hamaru and Akimichi Choji please make their way to the arena. After the six mentioned Janan were in the arena, Naruto continued, this will be a standard, 3 vs 3 team battle with teams consisting of Makshu Sweren, Hyuga Hinata and Saru Tobi Kono Hamaru on one side and Hikado Yoroi, Kaze Kage Kankuro and Akimichi Choji on the other side. Hajime. Sweren, Hinata and Kono Hamaru didn't waste any time in attacking their opponents. Sweren stamped her foot on the ground causing a wave of crystal spikes to erupt from the ground scattering her opponents. Hinata just activated her Byakugan and focused her will on the water vapor in the air causing blobs of water to coalesce over her head and float around lazily. Konohamaru let his two female teammates handle the ranged combat as he rushed towards the distracted Yoroi with a dark glare. Oh no! Kakashi muttered underneath his breath noticing the dark glare Konohamaru was directing towards Yoroi. Not that he could blame the young Sarutobi. Konohamaru seems to have developed an intense dislike for traitors after hearing the stories of Itachi from Sasuke. He just hoped that Konohamaru didn't kill the traitor. Kakashi observed the match with great concentration, having even revealed his Sharingan. Even though Konohamaru, Swearin and Hinata didn't ever work together before, it seems that training underneath Naruto has taught them to be very adaptive. A good quality to have as a Chunin. Turning his head. Kakashi saw Kankuro keep dodging the waves of crystal spikes that Swearan kept sending his way, always trying to reveal the bandage-wrapped package on his back. If he wasn't mistaken, then Kankuro was a Kugutsu practitioner and probably a good one as well. It is best that they don't allow him time to access his tools. Poison would easily change the pace of the battle. A sudden sound drew Kakashi's attention. Slightly turning his head, Kakashi was shocked to see Choji had launched a massive boulder at Hinata. Luckily for Hinata, the blob of water floating above her head had sent out tentacles to intercept it. The water had partially transformed into ice, as spikes of ice had ripped into the boulder. With a simple gesture of her arms, Hinata redirected the boulder towards a distracted Kankuro. Swearen saw that the boulder would miss Kankuro, so to move him into position, Swearen smirked and stomped her feet causing the crystal spikes all around the field to suddenly shatter with a deafening crack. As sparkling dust filled the area of the arena Kankuro occupied. A loud curse was heard as Kankuro jumped out of the dust only to be hit by the redirected boulder. The loud scream of pain from Kankuro and the sound of shattering crystal and wood distracted Yoroi for just a moment allowing Konohamaru to strike his chest with a simple palm strike. Unfortunately, Konohamaru decided to release a concentrated wave of blistering yellow flames. Yoroi screamed in pain as he was launched back due to the resulting explosion. Before Yoroi was even able to fight through the pain, Kakashi saw Konohamaru focus near Yoroi's head. Suddenly, an explosion blossomed at the point throwing the traitor away and knocking him unconscious. Kakashi turned his head to see Choji was sweating in fear, but had a confident expression. Slamming his hands onto the ground, a massive wave of rock spikes erupted all around him, rushing towards his three opponents. Swearin and Konohamaru just smirked and proceeded to destroy the spikes with well-timed punches, using their earth bending to easily counter. Hinata on the other hand took a completely surprising direction in her defense. As she was a water bender, she pulled all the water around her into a massive spinning dome of raging water, bearing resemblance to the Hakushukaiden. Everyone watched with shock as the raging torrents easily tore the spike of rock to dust, which kept swirling around with the water staining the crystal blue waters a muddy brown. As the wave of spikes dissipated, Choji jumped back to avoid the explosion that Konohamaru caused with his combustion bending, only to roll to the right as a wave of ice spikes shattered on the rock walls of the arena. Getting back onto his feet, Kakashi saw Choji look up with a startled expression before twisting on his heels and drilling into the ground. Kakashi was at first confused at Choji's sudden alarm but understood when he caught the slight sparkles in the air. Kakashi smirked underneath his mask at the battle. He could see that Choji realized that it was a hopeless situation. 
Both of his teammates were down, but also realized that he had to at least try his best, just like his opponents were trying their best. Kakashi turned his head and focused his attention on Choji's opponents and saw that Hinata had covered her arms in water and was rushing forward to strike at Choji, who had just popped out of the ground. From Hinata's right, at an angle of 30 degrees, Swearen was charging with her whole body glittering from the crystal dust armor she had covered herself with. From Hinata's left, at nearly the same angle, Konohamaru was charging while moving his arms in a repetitive circular motion as sparks of lightning erupted from his outstretched index and middle fingers. I wonder if Choji will realize that it is better to give up? Kakashi commented drawing a worried Asuma and Shikamaru's attentions along with a carefree Eno's. I am sure that he can go on a little longer. Eno commented with a careless tone though the worry was clear in her eyes. I have known Choji for a long time and I can assure you that he will give up if all else fails. After all, it is too troublesome to be needlessly injured for just a stupid exam, Shikamaru said just as Choji screamed out his forfeiture. See, what did I tell you? Winner by both knockout and forfeit, Mikshu Swearen, Hyuga Hinata and Sarutobi Konohamaru. Medic, Naruto exclaimed as the four conscious participants made their way up to the catwalk while two teams of Iranin had rushed towards the unconscious Konkuro and Yoroi. As they waited for the medics to clear the arena with their patients, Gar approached Swearen and Konohamaru with a blank expression on his face. With a bland tone, he said, Both of you are very skilled. I wouldn't mind proving my existence against either of you. Tamari and Baki, who were close by, shivered at the sudden bloodlust Gara was letting off, though it seemed that both of his targets weren't bothered in the slightest. In fact, Konohamaru seemed to be projecting his own killing intent at Gara. Swearin didn't even blink as the crystal dust floating around seemed to vibrate causing a gentle scraping sound of the sand viper to emerge from around her. I am sure that Konohamaru would love to take you up on the offer right here, but I do not wish to jeopardize my candidacy in the exams. Naruto-sama would be extremely displeased with such a case. Why don't we make a pact to either face off against each other in the finals or if we don't get the chance, why not spar after the exams are over? I am sure that neither Naruto-sama nor Hokage-sama would mind. Gar nodded in agreement before walking away with a satisfied smile on his face. He didn't miss Baki and Tamari tense up when he stated that he wouldn't mind proving his existence. He could now understand the subtle pleasure in pranking. No wonder Naruto used to pull pranks as a child. This was the most fun he has had in his life, and who would have thought that Shukaku had a sense of humor? He certainly didn't. Alright. Now that the arena is clear, will Nara Shikamaru, Dosu Avato, Amoi of Kumo and Yuki Haku of Uzu please come down to the arena? This match will be an all-range, 2 vs 2 team matchup with no Kawarimi. The teams will be Nara Shikamaru and Yuki Haku vs Amoi and Dosu. Naruto called out as the four named Janan jumped down to the arena from the catwalk though in Shikamaru's case, he looked quite bored. Hajime. Shikamaru and Haku shared a look and nodded to each other before both jumped back as they threw a wave of shuriken at their opponents. Amoi unsheathed his katana and easily parried the throwing stars while Dosu raised his arms and used the metallic gauntlets to parry them. Shikamaru and Haku didn't give them any time to react as both charged forward with Shikamaru bringing out a ceiling scroll. Throwing the scroll down. Shikamaru released a pulse of chakra as he placed his foot on the ceiling array while running. A burst of smoke erupted from the scroll before the whole floor of the arena was filled with a foot of water, surprising the other three Janan. Haku quickly recovered her composure as she used her limited water bending skills to surf on the water with Shikamaru beside her. Dosu and Amoe had barely gotten their bearings when whips of water struck them on the chest, throwing them into the wall. Before either could react, both were trapped by waves of water which flash froze into ice. Amoe and Dosu tried to wiggle free only to have a kunai held at their throats eliciting small stings. This match is over. Winner, Nara Shikamaru, and Yuki Haku. Will all winners please come back to the arena and stand in a line? Naruto called out as he used his mastery over water bending release the defeated duo and evaporate the foot deep water in one move. I didn't expect the battle to be over so soon. Then again, Haku is very adaptable in battle while the Nara can think over a hundred steps ahead of his opponent, so it shouldn't have come as much of a surprise. Zabuza commented with a grin, though hidden behind his bandages. Asuma, Kakashi and Guy nodded in agreement as the watch the 15 winners jump down to the arena and stand in a line as Naruto had instructed. Beside him, Anko appeared with a box held in her arms and called out, step up and draw a slip then stand back in line Gakis. Everyone followed Anko's command and quickly stepped forward took a slip of paper from the box and stepped back into line. 
After the 15 tuning hopefuls had taken their slips, Naruto called out, Now call out your names and number, starting from the extreme left. Higurashi Tenten, number number 9. Uzumaki Karen, number number 5. Kaze Kagegara, number number 12. Nisamui, number number 2. Uchiha Sasuke, number number 15. Yuki Haku, number number 6. Hyuga Hinata, number number 7. Kamazuri Kurotsuchi, number number 11. Narashi Kamaru, number number 13. Yamanaka Ino, number number 1. Sarutobi Konohamaru, number number 4. Aburame Shino, number number 10. Rock Lee, number number 14. Mikshu Swaren, number number 3. Hyuga Neji, number number 8. Naruto and Anko nodded as the latter wrote down the names before handing the clipboard to Naruto. Looking over the information, Naruto nodded to himself before stating, Now if you will remember, the finals will be an elimination tournament spread out over three days. The first day will focus on seven one-on-one -on -one matches with one competitor getting a bye to the next round that will occur the next day. The second day will be four matches, the quarterfinals as you all know. We have decided to forego the semifinals. Instead, the finals, that will be taking place on the third day, will be a battle royale between the winners of the four battles held on the second day. There will be no restrictions in how you battle. Do you understand? A chorus of sir, yes sir, came back eliciting a chuckle from the three cage. Naruto nodded before saying, then I shall give you the matchups for the third exams. Day 1. Match 1 Ino vs Lee Match 2 Samui vs Shikamaru Match 3 Swearin vs Gara Match 4 Konohamaru vs Kurotsuchi Match 5 Karen vs Shino Match 6 Haku vs Tenten Match 7 Hinata vs Neji by Sasuke Day 2 Match 8 Winner of Match 1 vs Winner of Match 3 Match 9 Winner of Match 2 vs Winner of Match 4 Match 10 Winner of Match 5 vs Winner of Match 7 Match 11 Winner of Match 6 vs Bai Day 3 Match 12 Battle Royale between Surviving Janan. The finals will take place exactly one month from now. I know many of you are wondering why the month long wait, so let me clear out the confusion. The finals will be watched by many foreign dignitaries. This one month is for them to reach Konoha, or wherever the tuning exams is being held. Know this, most of the dignitaries will be representatives of Daimyo. The better show you put on in the finals, the higher the chances your village will be sent more missions. Now a word of advice. Don't waste this month on only preparing for your next opponent. Anticipate all possible opponents and make appropriate preparations. I can guarantee that it will help. Now dismissed. The next morning, Ino, Shikamaru, Hinata, Shino, Karen, Swearen, Haku, Tenten, Lee, Neji, Sasuke and Konohamaru were standing in training ground 3 with Zabuza, Asuma, Kurinai, Kakashi, and Guy, waiting for Naruto. They didn't have to wait long as Naruto appeared in the middle of the training ground with Sakura and Tsunade. Good, all of you are here. To the Janan, you all will be trained by all of us throughout the month, though through the use of Cage Bunshine so as to keep the knowledge of individual training out of your possible opponent's reach. Other than that, general training will occur together. Now to everyone, Orochimaru and Otto plan to invade Konoha sometime during the tuning exams finals. The joint training will be to bring you up to my standards. During the training, you lot will be taught Jonin level tactics along with physical and mental conditioning. Now all Janan, dismissed. Meet up here tomorrow at dawn. The Janan nodded before dispersing leaving behind the Jonin. After a couple of minutes of silence, Guy asked, What orders do you have for us, Naruto Asama? Simple Guy. You five will be moving about the stadium, helping out as much as you can. I have assigned Onko, Iruka and Oman to handle the defense of the evacuation shelter with Janan under their command. Jiraiya will be moving about helping as much as he can along with Sakura. Sakura nodded in agreement, showing that she was on board with Naruto's plans. Finally, Tsunade will be handling the defense of the hospital. Any questions? Everyone shared a look before shaking their heads causing Naruto to nod in satisfaction. I shall lead the offensive against Orochimaru with the cage. I have confirmation that Niyugito and Kaze Kagegara along with Fu shall be leading the defense of the VIPs, so you won't need to focus on them. Just keep the civilians safe. The Hachibi Jin Chiriki, Kiribai, the Rakubi Jin Chiriki, Utakata, the Ibi Jin Chiriki, Roshi, and the Gobi Jin Chiriki, Han will be on the front lines helping out any way they can under the orders from their cage. There are reports that dissatisfied elements in all villages may have joined up with Orochimaru and will be threats. Eliminate them with extreme prejudice. Now dismissed.
The five Jonin didn't waste time as they disappeared in puffs of smoke, or in the case of Zabuza and Kakashi, mist and sparks respectively. After they were gone, Tsunade placed a palm on Naruto's shoulder and said with a smile, You did quite well Naruto. I don't know why you were so nervous. Besides, you better get used to it. After all, you take over as the Hokage next month. I agree with Tsunade. You need to relax Naruto. How about we have breakfast at Ichiraku's, my treat, Sakura said with a smile causing Naruto's serious face to morph into a gleaming grin. Whatever you say Sakura-chan. I am not about to turn down free ramen. Sakura shook her head with fond exasperation as she said, you must be the only daimyo in existence who would prefer to eat ramen over all the expensive foods in the world. It is an Uzumaki thing, Sakura. I had seen my grandmother put away more bowls of the stuff than I can drink sake. Tsunade mused as the three headed out of the training ground at a leisurely pace. So, have you made a decision? Naruto said walking into the cells carved into the bedrock underneath the Uzumaki estate. In a cell was Kaguya Kimimaro and Hugo. Hugo and Kimimaro looked way better than expected of two prisoners, but that was because they really weren't once. Hugo preferred to be caged until he had proper control of his Kekai Genkai. Kimimaro was here to visit his friend. Kimimaro looked up and stated, I agree to join Uzu, Naruto Asama. And I thank you for having me treated for my disease. I have decided to join the Iba clan underneath Zabuza Sama. And I have decided to be an Uzu Shinobi but without any affiliation with any clan. May I ask when we shall start training to master my Kekai Genkai? Hugo asked with a soft tone. Immediately, please follow me to the secluded grove at the back of the estate. That is where the natural energy is at its purest in Konoha and a good place to meditate. I hope you don't mind sitting in the same place of hours at a time but meditation is the only way to safely connect with nature and natural energy. Naruto said as they walked out of the cells and towards the back end of the estate. After you have mastered meditation, the next step will be learning to safely draw in natural energy and mix it with your chakra to produce Senjutsu Chakra. That is the most difficult step as mistakes tend to cause petrification. Fascinating, but if mistakes and learning Senjutsu leads to petrification, why even try it? Kimimaro asked with interest. Naruto nodded as he said, I can understand your belief Kimimaro. The answer is quite complex. Simply, it allows the user to become one with nature. The clairvoyance one gains from such a union is quite gratifying, both spiritually and physically. In the case of Hugo, the fear of petrification is replaced by the drawing out of the chaos that hides within us. The base instincts that have been suppressed to a degree with the advent of sentience. So, I just need to get a better mastery of my baser instincts and everything should be fine? Naruto chuckled and said, not exactly, but close. Natural energy tends to strengthen the bond of the user with nature. In return, it exponentially strengthens the user, and I am not talking only physically. Spiritually, the clairvoyance is the strength that leads to powerful sensory abilities. Mentally, now that is a bit difficult to explain. While it strengthens the mental processes, it also draws out the baser instincts. The instincts we suppress. The worst qualities of our existence. For me, it is my arrogance. For you, I believe that it is your suppressed rage and anger. Hugo and Kimimaro nodded in agreement before Kimimaro bid his farewell and left to meet up with Zabuza. Hugo and Naruto kept walking at a leisurely pace until they reached the clearing, only to find Sakura and Fu meditating. Sharing a look, Naruto motioned for Hugo to copy what he did and both sat down to meditate. It would be over three hours before Hugo would finally awake from his trance, though his body had run wild due to the unfettered access the natural energy had to his system. Luckily, Naruto and Sakura were easily able to prevent any damage from occurring while Fu kept meditating, but still keeping attention to the commotion near her. That's it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and follow me on my other social media accounts. Anime God here, and I'm signing off.